there, I'm Jessica. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a vignette foam crossbody bag from Hold It Right There patterns. This bag is perfect for someone who's on the go, perfect for someone who loves to travel. It is domestic machine friendly, beginner friendly, and it requires minimal hardware. This bag is perfect for someone who is just now starting out with bag making. It's the perfect project. I'm going to show you why this bag is my favorite. And here it is. I think it's so pretty. It's so fun to make. It's a quick sew. It doesn't take that long to make this bag. Um, I'll start off here. We've got this flap here. Uh, it's got a magnetic snap. You can use a fashion snap if you want to. There is a slip pocket here. It's got card slots, so it's for easy access when you are on the go. You have your main compartment. This can hold so much here. If you've got your keys, if you have additional, you know, wallet needs you want or pepper spray, you know, anything. You've got a slip pocket here. All right, and then on the outside, you have a slip pocket for your cell phone. I don't know about you, but I prefer to have my cell phone right against my body. I will show you what this looks like on. For size reference, I am a size small and I'm about five foot one. This is what it looks like on. And then sometimes I wear it to the front. If I've got my kids, I do wear it towards the front. Um, it's just the perfect bag. It's, it's so fun, I promise. You're going to love this. I want to say thank you so much to Susanna from Hold It Right There Patterns for allowing me to use your pattern on my channel. All right, are you ready to make your own vignette foam crossbody bag? You can go ahead and go to the link down in the description below and grab your pattern um, and grab your materials and let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's talk about our supplies. For this bag, we're gonna need three different types of fabric. So for fabric one, you'll need a quarter yard. And then for fabric two, you'll need a half a yard. For fabric one, this is gonna be your exterior, the front and the back, and the outer sides of the lining pocket and the card slots. And if you choose to do the D-ring tabs, um, and then for lining, the lining pieces, this is fabric two. I'm choosing to go with a waterproof canvas because you don't have to interface it. So the pattern pieces, for pattern piece C, you'll need two cuts of your front and the back. Just keep in mind that you will have a flap covering the upper portion of your exterior front. So if there's something you'd like shown on the front, just keep that in mind before you start cutting it. For your card slots, you're going to need two cuts. You'll need the outer layer and then your inner layer. For your lining pocket, you'll need two cuts. You'll need your outer layer and then your inner layer. For the lining pieces, you'll need two cuts of your inner layer. For This is your slip pocket lining. For D, for the slip pocket lining for the outer layer, you'll need two cuts as well. Now for lining piece H, I ran out of this pink uh, waterproof canvas, so I went ahead and just cut out the bag lining for the exterior and put it in here for the bag lining. For fabric three, you'll need a quarter yard. I decided to go ahead and use this faux leather. It's called Mora Faux Leather, and I got this off Emmeline Bags. It's very lightweight, but it's very sturdy as well. Um, it's domestic friendly. I really do like this. I decided to go ahead and do the D-ring tabs also in the faux leather. Um, you'll need two cuts of this. You'll need two cuts for your exterior top. This is for the front and the back of the bag. You'll need two cuts of your flap. And then you'll need one cut for the base of your bag. For your interfacing, if you're gonna be using quilt cotton on this, and you'll definitely wanna use an SF 101 or something that's similar to this, since I'm using waterproof canvas, I won't be using any of this interfacing. 
Um, so for the flap, you'll want to do an ultra firm stabilizer. I'm using Decoville Heavy. This I've used in my other two bags and I really do like that. And then for the base of the bag, I am using some Peltex. Um, it's 70 Peltex for the base of the bag here. So you'll just need one cut of that and then one cut for the flap. And here is all the hardware and the notions that I'll be using. I've got clips, I've got some webbing, it's one inch by 54 inch. I've got my one inch slider, two one inch day rigs, two one inch swivel hooks, my one by six inch ruler. I will be sewing with Tex 45 weight variegated thread. This is called Unicorn Mane. I get this from Wizardry Stitchery. I've got Kimberbell tape. I do like to use this on the card slots or the um, slip pockets just to keep everything in place on the way to the sewing machine. I do like to use double-sided tape. Um, I use this for the bag tag. I get my bag tags from the Heartwood and Hide. If you need bag tags, I really suggest the Heartwood and Hide. They are amazing. They do such a great job. Um, there is a waiting list, so if you do want some made, I suggest going to their website and just getting on their waiting list. I promise you it's worth it. Some marking tools, I'll be using vinyl, so I've got a vinyl pen, an air erasing marker, a chalk pencil, and then I've got a stiletto and seam ripper combo. A lighter, which is always handy in the sewing room. Um, I've got some Fabri-Tac. This is gonna be used for the stabilizer for the bottom of the bag. I do have a rivet press here. Um, this thing is amazing. If you don't have one, I do suggest investing in one someday, but I promise these are really cool to have. I've got my hole punch here and then I've got some scraps. This will be used for the rivets and also the magnetic step just to give it some more stability. I've got my magnetic snaps here and then I've got some rivets. I'm gonna be using this on my um, adjustable strap. And then these are the, the dies that we'll be using for um, installing the magnetic snaps and the rivets on the adjustable back strap. Bag. I'm so ready. Let's get started. All right, I've got my flaps already out and I've got the stabilizer out. And I've also got my male magnetic snaps. I'm gonna be using the magnetic snaps. If you'd like, you can use fashion snaps or those heavy duty snaps, whatever you prefer. Um, I've got my hole punch so I can might make some holes in here to put um, our snaps in and I've got my rivet press. I already have the die inserted into the rivet press and I've got the female end here that we will be using to insert the, um, the snap. I've got a piece of stabilizer. This is Decoville Light that I'll be using to give the snap a little bit more um, stability. I'm going to start off with sewing the flap together. Um, so what you want to do is have your flap right sides together. Um, I'm going to start off with this first. It says to in the pattern to go ahead and do your snap, but I like to do my snap after I've done this piece. Um, that's just what I like to do. You can do it according to the pattern, however you're comfortable. I'm not gonna sew on this top straight edge because we will be inserting the stabilizer in the flap. So I'm just clipping these together. do is we're going to sew down the right, down the bottom, and back up to the left using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right. Take these clips up here, set those aside. I'll be using those. I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this here. I'm going to go ahead and trim up here. Just like this, and then I'm gonna come over here and trim the corners, about a 45-ish degree angle. This is gonna help it turn, um, I guess, flatten out easier. Um, and then I'll come over here and do the same thing I did over there. Just 
trim it off a little bit here. You don't want to cut into your stitching. That wouldn't be good. Sorry, my chair is kind of loud, squeaky. I don't think it was like that, but my kids like to play on this chair. I'm going to flip this right side out. And just check on it and make sure it's looking okay. If not, you can go back and fix it, no big deal. I'm just gonna gently poke these corners out. And if you're using vinyl like I am, you want to roll the seams. I'm gonna get out this little tool. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but this thing is pretty awesome. Poke out that corner over here. Poke out this corner over here. Oh, got a little. Okay, that's okay. All right, whoops. Close that up before I drop them on my foot or something. All right, we're gonna roll the seam here. Gonna roll this. I like to roll it. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my flap stabilizer. I'm going to insert this inside. I like to make sure that the seam inside is tucked underneath the seam allowance, just that way it's not uneven or looking funny. So just whatever is easiest for you, but I do prefer to have it all under the same direction under the seam allowance. Insert this down a little bit more to get down the bottom. I'm going to put some pins in here. Straighten this out a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. clips here. All right. Um, I am going to sew from right bottom to the left using an eighth and eighth inch seam allowance. Do some top stitching here. really good perfect okay all right so let's go ahead and install our male magnetic snap here I've got my hole punch here let me see where is my piece I've got this here now it's a little bit smaller so what I'm gonna do is I will measure We'll measure down. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my midpoint real quick. I should have made a midpoint earlier, but that is all right. Just gonna make a little teeny tiny snip. There we go. And grab a vinyl marking tool. I'm going to measure down from that top center, five and three quarters. There we go. Did 
Get it go all the way through. I don't know what's going on with this hole punch. It was doing great, but now it's not doing so good. Let me see. Let's go through here. Oh, okay, that's fine. All right. What I'm gonna do is put a hole in this stabilizer. Right in the center. And that will work. I'm going to come down here and just place this in this hole. Match up the holes anyways. There we go. I'm going to put my mail snap in here. Perfect. Pop the rivet. On the other side, there we go. All right, and make sure that your rivet is on the right side and then your rail snap is on the inside of the flap. All right, so the rivet is on the top and then I'm gonna insert the male magnetic snap down on the bottom die here and it just kind of fits right on in. I'm going to push down on my rivet press here. All right, and we have the flap installed, and I'll get this mark cleaned up. Moving on to the D-ring tabs, what I like to do is make a center mark right in the center of this using a marking tool. All right. Oh, if you hear that, that is my dog. I am so sorry. All right. I'm going to take some double-sided sticky tape, and I'm just going to put it in the center of this line here. You don't have to do this. You can just fold it if you want to, but this will help keep the tabs in place while I sew it together. Okay. Remove that. Move this paper. All right, and meet this in the middle. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just use a clip. This double-sided tape is so good. It's from Weft and Warp. Um, if you can get some, I would grab it. Um, sometimes she has it, but I actually was able to get this from Mormino. Now what we're gonna do now is we're going to sew the edges, the left and right long edges, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. insert these into our D-ring so you want to have the wrong side facing the inside like this and go ahead and clip it. I'm going to grab these clips here instead of these longer ones. Just set that to the side. Again you want to take the inside of your D-ring, the wrong side of your tab and place it around the D-ring. Like this. There we go. All right. What we're going to do now is you're going to bring your flap over and we are going to face it right side up. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to place these D-ring tabs right along the edges. Up here at the top, at the end of your flap. Bring this one over on this right side. 
like so. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this at a, is it a quarter inch? It is a quarter inch seam allowance. You wanna back stitch here to reinforce these little D-ring tabs. All right, this is what you should have. Now we've got the exterior of the flap with the tabs right here on each side, right and the left, and then we've got the inside of the flap. Our next step is to grab our card slots, which is pattern piece I. And what we're gonna do is place our fabric right sides together. We're going to leave a three inch opening here so that we can turn this right side out. Make sure you back stitch really well um, at the beginning and the end because like I said, we will be turning out this pocket. Okay. Go ahead and grab some scissors. I'm going to clip the corners like this. You want to get it close to the stitches, but not so close that you cut your stitches. That would be bad. We don't want to do that. Okay. Let's go ahead and carefully turn this pocket right side out. good you can take this to the iron if you've got a material that you can iron to flatten it out like me I'm using canvas uh, waterproof cans canvas and water resistant canvas so I'm just gonna press on it and roll the seams a little get this down here as straight as possible That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this down at the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to top stitch at the top. Go ahead and leave the bottom opening still open. We'll end up closing this once we grab our slip pocket lining of the inner part. Actually, let me just fix one more little thing. I just wanna push this out just a little bit more. Okay, that's better. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the top edge and also to make our card slots, you wanna find your center here. You can grab a marking tool if you'd like. Um, so you've got a straight line going down. Made the mark down the center. That may erase by the time we get to that point, but let's go ahead and top stitch this. Eighth of an inch seam allowance. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we want to go ahead and grab our slip pocket lining, the inner pocket lining here. And what we're going to do is mark the centers at the top. I'm going to go ahead and make a little snip. You can make a mark with your marking tool if you'd like to, but I like to make little snips. Have 
chalk all over this. That's what that is. Okay, so now we're gonna make another mark. I'm gonna set one of these, whoops, to the side. We're gonna grab our ruler and we're going to mark one and a half inches down. Excuse me, one and a quarter inches down. I don't have my big, the bigger ruler, so I'm just gonna use two right here for a moment, just to make my mark. All right, one and a quarter down on both, both sides. All right. Okay, now we're going to take our card slot and we're going to center it. I'm gonna grab my ruler here just to make sure it is going on there straight. Down the center here, mark the center. Let me see, one and a quarter. Kind of, there we go, right here. As you can see, my pocket is just not the perfect little rectangle, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. And I want to make sure the center mark is right where it should be. Okay. That looks pretty good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of tape. This is Kimberbell tape. I'm just going to tape a couple of the edges just so I don't lose this spot. And then this is where we're gonna also close up the bottom. Okay, we're gonna sew an eighth of an inch down the right side, down the bottom and up and then back down back towards the left and then up on the left side. Okay, that looks pretty good. I never have the perfect rectangle and I'm okay with that. Let's see here. I just wanna test it and make sure that my pockets are good for cards and it looks great. All right, let's move on. You're gonna need your inner slip pocket lining, the one with the card slots you just did. You'll need a ruler, a marking tool, and you're gonna need pattern piece A, the front and the back top here. We're going to make some markings on each side from the top edges. It will be one and a half inches from the top. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our pattern A pieces and we're going to take the long edge and flip this right sides together with our inner lining pocket here. We're going to clip these together. Clip them together. And then we're going to sew using a half an inch seam allowance. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this to where the flap is going to go down. So we want the flap 
to be on your inner lining pockets here. You can iron this if you want to, but I'm just going to lightly press on here. And then we're gonna sew this down, top stitch at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and grab your remaining slip pocket lining, the inner layer, and then grab your flap and also that pattern piece A, your exterior front top or back. And what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure that the exterior of the flap is face down. So right side down with your, your lining and match up your midpoints here. I'm gonna match up your midpoints here. And what we're going to do is base this down at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so your D-rings should be down. Make sure they're not facing upwards. You definitely don't want to hit that with your needle. All right, so this is what it should look like. We're going to base this again at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, go ahead and grab your pattern piece A, and you wanna make sure your long sides are gonna go right at the top here. So long sides at the top edge here, match up your corners. So your flap should be sandwiched in between the A piece, your top A piece and then your inner lining here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this at a half an inch seam allowance. We're going to take this and flip this down like so. So you've got the exterior piece A down at the bottom. You've got your D-rings up at the top and then your lining here. So just smooth this out. You can go iron it if you'd like to. If you've got, again, a material that you can iron, I'm just going to press it down. And then we're going to go ahead and Top stitch this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, this is what you should have right now. This is what it should look like. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our slip pockets, the exterior front and back which is your C. And then we're going to install the female end of the magnetic snap, or if you're using the um, fashion snap, we're gonna install that now. I went ahead and sewn in my, my back tag on this panel. So now we're going to measure two and a quarter from your center mark. So if you haven't done your center mark, go ahead and do that. Again, it's two and a quarter down. And I'm gonna use an air erasing marker. All right, I'm gonna take the hole punch and make my hole here. All right, here we go. And also, I have a little piece of stabilizer that I'm gonna use for more stability on the, for the snap. Just using a little square. I'm gonna make a hole right in the center. All right. 
Okay, let me make sure we've got the holes here. And we do. Okay, you want to make sure that you have the female end on the exterior of this panel. I'm going to place this piece of Decoville light right over this. And then I'm going to place this rivet right on top. And it's smooth, so this should not affect your lining at all. So I'm gonna take the male die and insert this into the press. And then I'm going to place the female end right in here and press down. All right, whoops, that came right out. All right, and we've installed the female snap here. Grab your outer layer lining for the slip pockets, which is gonna be pattern piece D. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our outer layers, the exterior front and the back. And we are going to start with the panel with the snap. And we're going to sew these at the top edge right sides together at a half an inch seam allowance. Okay, we're going to flip this over. You can iron this if you need to. I'm just going to Roll these seams down. We're going to top stitch this at an eighth inch seam allowance. All right, this is what it should look like right now the panel with the snap, and then we'll go and do the exact same thing with the other side, right sides together. All right, again at a half inch seam allowance. This canvas is so nice. It really does just do what it, it just does what you want it to do. And then we're gonna top stitch this at eighth of an inch. So you should have the outer lining like this with your exterior panels. That looks so good. This looks really good. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab pieces C and D and then A and B. So what we're gonna do now is we have previously marked one and a half inches down from the top edge down here. And this is what we're gonna be doing with this. We're gonna start off with this pocket and the magnetic snap, so set this aside. And what you're gonna do is take 
the panel with your magnetic snap and you're going to line the top edge with this mark that you previously made. You're going to clip it or pin it, whatever you want to do here. I'm gonna use this clip here. Do the same with the other side. Just go ahead and place this right on that line. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're going to lift this panel up so that way the lining is only showing only the lining so it'll look like this and now what we're going to do is we're going to sew from here all the way down down through here and up to the side to go ahead and make this pocket and then we're going to sew this i believe at a quarter inch seam allowance yes it'll be a quarter inch seam allowance now these should be your lining your outer lay outer lining should be sewn together like that so now you've got your pocket already here this is beautiful here I love that and then here's the other one with your your card slots it's so cute oops let me put that back I just had to check it out okay all right okay now we're gonna start off with the exterior of the bag, which is pattern piece G. And what we're gonna do is these notches here, we're gonna mark three quarters of an inch down on both sides. Okay. Three quarters of an inch down. And we're gonna use this in a later step whenever we box the bag. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take these pieces that we just put together. Go ahead and take the piece with the magnetic snap end. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your exterior base and flip it so that the bottom is right sides together with this panel. So not the lining, only the panel. Only the panel here. So we'll go ahead and put the clip them together, right sides together. We're getting close to the end, close to the end. Oops, let me fix that. All right, this is gonna be sewn at a half inch allowance. Okay, we're going to flip this over. Okay. We're going to have this go I believe above the seam, yeah. So we're gonna have this, your exterior go up, up like so. And then we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's what you should have so far. Okay, now take the other, the other one, 
right here. And remember, we're not sewing the lining. We just wanna take this outer panel here and put this right sides together and then clip it. And we're gonna sew this at a half inch seam allowance. this over because we want the seam allowance here to go up towards the top of the bag. Just like we did on the other side, you want it to go up and then we're going to top stitch that at an eighth of an inch. I know we're, make sure not to have your lining in this. is what you should have right now. Flip this back this way, you're lining backwards, your D-rings here. And we're gonna close this up. This is looking so good. I love it. All right, let's go ahead and turn this around. We're going to pin this right sides together. So what we're gonna do is match up, you want to match up your side seams over here. Okay. It's gonna feel kinda weird because you've got this flap hanging out here. Go ahead and get this as straight as possible. Okay, we're gonna clip the sides. I'm gonna use these clips instead right now. sides, both sides at a half inch seam allowance. box these corners. Um, it's just easier if I can just, I'm going to go right through the center of this and I'm going to open my seams and match up this little mark that we made previously to make this box. You just have to open it up a little bit here. All right, open the seams and match the seam right there with that center mark here. All right, so then it looks like this. I'm going to clip this like so. I also like to add clips on the side here just to keep this stay at this triangle shape here. I'm going to go on the other side. Again, I'm going to reach in 
through the center of this bag. Oops, wrong one. Wrong one again. I'm gonna get it. Okay, here we go. Okay, and open this up and then match up that seam with this little center marking that we've done. Pull. Sometimes it's easier to just open it up a little bit down towards the center of the bag. You can see here, I'm just opening it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, again, you want that seam to be open like this. If it's not perfect, it's okay. It's still gonna be, it's still gonna be great. Don't worry. I'm gonna take clips and place them down so it keeps the shape. This will be easier to sew as well. So we've got the boxes. This is what it should look like for you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I believe sewing this at a half an inch seam allowance. Yes, half an inch. I'm going to kind of smush this. Um, let's start. Yeah, I'm going to smush this down and out of the way. It's okay if it gets a little wrinkle. We can always iron it if you need to. the base of the bag Oops. just about done I don't know if she has you trim these but um I'm going to let me see I think I've trimmed them on my other bags um, yeah so go ahead and grab your scissors and we'll go ahead and trim them close to the seam allowance just don't don't cut any of your stitching. I'm gonna do about eighth of an inch or so. Both sides. Oops, we got this right here. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm about to cut this anyways. All right. All right. This is what we've got so far. All right, the best part has come. Well, at least it's my favorite part. When we turn the bag right side out and see what it's looking like. I'm so excited, this is my favorite, I just love it. I love it so much. All right, let's turn this bag right side out gently. You don't wanna break any seams. Um, Depending on your material, it could be easier for you or a little bit harder. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love that so much. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. <sighs> What do you think? What do you think? You love your bag? I love it, it's so cool. These are, this is such a fun pattern. I love this pattern so much. Okay, all right. Next, what we're gonna do is work on our lining pocket, which is pattern piece J. Go ahead and set this aside for now. Okay, and uh, we are going to Put your fabric together, right sides together, and we're gonna leave a three inch opening at the bottom. We're gonna turn this pocket 
right sides out after we're done stitching. Okay. Get my marking tool here, a erasing marker, and then my ruler to mark our three inch opening here. Remember to, you want to backstitch at the beginning and the end just to help reinforce those stitchings. When we pull those through, we're going to sew this at a half an inch seam allowance. Yes, half an inch seam allowance. All right, here we go. Reduce the bulk in our seams. I'm gonna do this close to the stitching. Okay. Turn this right side out carefully. best one I've done. Okay, I'm going to clip the bottom here. We will close this opening up once we sew this on to our lining panel. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to We're going to top stitch this right at the top edge here at eighth of an inch seam allowance. I will singe off these little tails just to make it look a little nicer. We don't want to leave those hanging. pretty good. All right. Let's go ahead and grab our bag lining, which is the last piece besides the stabilizer for the bottom of the bag. It's going to be your pattern piece H. All right. We're going to mark the center of one of these. We'll do this one. Mark the center so we can make sure we put our pocket on as straight as possible. I'm just gonna mark a little, a little triangle. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my ruler. We're gonna measure, it's two and a half inches below the top edge of the marked, the marking of your, the center here. Two and a half. Hold on, guys. Okay. I'm going to take my ruler and just use that line that I just made to make sure that I get this on here as straight as possible. Okay. 
Okay. You also want to find the center of your pocket, which I have not done yet. That would be good. That would be very helpful here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to grab this other ruler just to make sure I've got my center marks where they should be. All right. There we go. I'm going to grab some tape just to hold this in place while we go and sew this down. All right, we're going to take, we're going to go ahead and sew from the right down to the bottom and come up to the left and make sure you backstitch here. Side of your lining we're going to place them right sides together right sides together and we're going to clip the edges we're going to sew this down at a half inch seam allowance we're going to do the bottom as well. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end, especially at these corners, as we will be um, matching the seams down here to box our corners. All right. So again, we're going to sew from the top to the bottom and then down to the bottom here at a half inch seam allowance. I forgot one thing. We're actually gonna leave this open. I forgot all about that. This is gonna be an opening on the side. You can choose whatever side you want, whether it's the left or the right, but we will be pulling the bag through the opening of this uh, lining. So it's gonna be five inch opening. Sorry about that. Just five inches. And remember to backstitch really well and especially here, since we will be turning the bag through that opening. We're going to trim our seam allowances down close to the stitching. about an eighth of an inch or so. It'll be fine. This will reduce the bulk in the bag. And then here I would um, not trim down this area that we're gonna have to sew through. I would leave, I would kind of cut like this, um, just to leave that so that it'll be easier for you to close that opening. This, there we go. So it'll look like that. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and box the lining piece here. I like to go inside of the bag and just kind of Spread it out as much as you can. This opening is going to be pretty small. Um, you can have your seam go opposite directions or unless you want them to go the same direction, whatever's easier, but I like to have it go the opposite direction here. And I'm going to, I'm going to use um, these clips instead right now. Match up that seam here. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with 
the base of the bag. I like to keep this triangular shape here. It makes it easier to sew, in my opinion. And go from the inside. Make sure that this seam is going the same direction as the other side. Otherwise, your bag will come out a little wonky, which is okay, but you, you just kind of want to match that up so that it fits nicely inside. And it's the lining, so it's really not that big of a deal, but you do you, whatever you want to do. Okay, we're going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna kind of smush this down, which is a lot easier because it is your lining pieces. So we're going to go ahead and trim these corners close to the stitching, about an eighth of an inch. All right. And there we go. Now we're going to take our lining and we're going to take the exterior of our bag and we're going to place this inside of our lining. So we want to make sure to have the pocket facing the back of the bag. So it's gonna be the pocket, and then we're gonna have the flap side be on the inside of this bag. So we're just gonna kinda of gently smush this in here. I'm gonna put my hand inside the bag and just gently guide this through. And go ahead and take your flap and push it inside as well. Push it inside in between the exterior and the lining. We don't want to sew your flap down. Now what we're going to do is match up your seams here. You can open them up if you want, or you can have them go in opposite directions. Um, I'm gonna have mine go the opposite. No, I'm gonna open them up, I think. Line up your top edges and clip them together. at a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna smush this in like this. Closer to your stitching. This will help reduce the bulk in this area here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull our bag out through the side here. Gently pull out your bag. I like to pull the bottom out first and just kind of push it gently through from the opening here. Get your flap as well. I 
can feel that. Just push carefully here. Now, before we close up this opening here, what we need to do is grab your stabilizer for the base, grab your Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1 glue, whatever it is you want to use here, and I'm going to put this all over the base here, and then I'm going to fold this in half just to insert it here. We don't want to get any glue all over our fabric here. So just gently bring it through here, open it up carefully and place it at the bottom. close up our lining opening. Uh, I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to take it since we have these little notches we left here, you should just be able to gently fold it in. Make sure it is about the same size here. All right, we're going to clip it. This is all bunching up. I'll fix it uh, in just a moment after we get the bag pulled through. All right, I'm going to sew this right here at an eighth inch seam allowance. All right, let's go ahead and gently push this inside. stitch this. Make sure you have your flap out of the way while we do this. straps and we're good to go. I went ahead and previously made my straps at the beginning. I do kind of like to have my straps done. Um, so when the bag is completed, all I have to do is put on my straps. All right. Well, there we go. You're done. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoy making this bag as much as I enjoy making this bag. It's such a great pattern. Um, if you do make this bag, please tag me on Instagram at hashtag Jessica Grace and Bacon. I would love to see what you've made. Um, if at any point you like this video, please boop the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, you guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.